Thank you very much and thank you for the incredible honour and privilege of being the 21st leader of our great party. Can I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respect to their elders past and present. I said on Monday that for me and for all of us, we're not just a party, we're a movement. A movement for a better Australia. A movement that has an incredible history. Whether it was Andrew Fisher setting up the Navy, building the Transcontinental Railway. You look at those photos over there. You look at John Curtin, who the nation turned to in our darkest hour to see us through the Second World War. You look at Ben Chifley, who led post-war reconstruction and helped establish modern Australia. That modernisation was stagnant for a while. And then along came Gough, who brought us, brought us into what is now modern Australia, did so much in such a short period of time. And then, of course, along came Bob Hawke, who transformed the country just as largely and just as significantly as Gough Whitlam did. But he taught us something else. He and Paul Keating taught us that we need long-term Labor government to entrench our reform and change agenda. Yeah. And then I was incredibly privileged to serve in Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard's governments. History will treat them well. The apology to the stolen generation, taking action on climate change, most significantly, most significantly, coming through the global financial crisis better than any industrialised economy in the entire world. Yeah. I pay tribute to Bill and to Tanya. These two giants of our movement have fought for the cause of labour their entire lives. No one could have done more to try to get us in the room where we want to sit after the next election than Bill Shorten as leader, ably assisted by his loyal, passionate and talented deputy, Tanya Plibersek. Bill Shorten's given a lifetime to this movement, the industrial wing and the political wing, which go together, go together, hand in hand, and we don't shy away from our origins. Indeed, we are proud of our connections to the great trade union movement of this country. Amen. To Bill and to Tanya, I say to this, I welcome your contribution to the new team. You will have significant roles to play, not the least of which will be to give me advice <laughs> about how my performance can be improved and a way forward. You've been through uh, the, uh, the, the furnace that is a federal election campaign. Um, for those of us who've been campaign directors, been senior candidates, uh, I say that uh, unless you've actually done it, uh, I, I, I don't know what it is like. I look forward to the experience. But I do so. I do so with something that's a really important starting point. That started with your leadership. Unity. Unity of purpose. We learnt the lessons of the last time we were in government and we haven't gone back there. The fact that I stand today as the person elected to lead our great party uh, unanimously with the support of the caucus and the party is quite extraordinary. I've been in this place for more than two decades. I've been through a few processes. Uh, this has been smooth. It's been collegiate. It's been in the spirit of unity. People have put the interests of our great party before their own interests. And that is Labor at our best. 
In the election campaign, it has to be said, and I say it unequivocally today, I accept my share as a senior shadow minister in the show for the fact that we weren't successful. I think the senior members, all of us, have to accept responsibility that uh, those many millions of Australians who rely upon us and the tens of thousands of people who have worked on our campaigns need us to do better next time. And today we resolve to do just that. To our fallen caucus members, I pay tribute to them and acknowledge uh, the hard time. I've spoken to all of them and I'll continue and I say to caucus colleagues, continue to reach out to difficult period in their lives. And uh, we know that for all of them, for all of them, it wasn't anything that they did wrong. They were hard working, as were our candidates in marginal ele electorates. And I pay tribute to them as well as every single true believer out there who campaigned for the cause of Labor, not for something for themselves, but because they want a better nation. To Scott Morrison, I say congratulations. Uh, you have been elected the Prime Minister of Australia uh, by, the, by the people of Australia. That is an incredible honour. Uh, earlier today at a media conference, I said that I'd reached out to Scott and organised for us to talk. Uh, I've heard since that he actually did text me a congratulations uh, to a wrong number uh, <laughs> a, a, a couple of days ago. And he then on Tuesday followed up with a text message um, that I thought was from Scott, my mate from Concord, who I grew up with. <laughs> who I, who, so, to Scott and Cherie, g'day. They grew up in Lambert Street, Camperdown, in council housing with me. And they come, they don't live in my electorate anymore. They live in Reed, but apologies, they still come and hand out for me. Uh, and uh, they, are, they are great people. And uh, so to Scott, where's your message, mate? <laughs> to the Prime Minister, I say thank you for the courtesy in sending me uh, that message. I say that I respect the office of Prime Minister. That doesn't mean you'll get an easy time because you won't. Uh, my job and our job in this room is to hold you to account. Mm -hmm. We have fundamental differences, mm -hmm. fundamental differences about the direction that the country should go. Part of those differences are that we understand that change happens. And we went to an election campaign fighting for a change agenda. That's harder than if you're just trying to preserve the status quo of existing relationships within society. But I say this also, that where we can reach agreement, we will do so. I want to be known as the Labor leader, not the opposition leader. I want to be prepared on issues such as reconciliation and the recognition of First Nations people in our constitution and, and the voice. I want to advance that. Issues like that can only be advanced with consensus. You can't win a constitutional change if there's argument out there. And I say that there are so many issues that are so important facing this nation uh, that are before us uh, that are much more important than differences between us. And I make that offer genuinely and sincerely. Can I say also that uh, I understand the great responsibility that I have. I love this party. I love our supporters, but I also love the nation and I have a responsibility to them. The fact is that at the last election, uh, we are in circumstances whereby one in four Australians didn't vote for either of the major political parties. We received the support of one in three Australians as their first preference. In Queensland, that figure was one in four. We need to do better if we are going to have the first caucus meeting of the next parliament just down the corridor. And I'm determined that we do just that. 
I believe that one of the reasons for that, one in four vote for neither of the major political parties, is that people have conflict fatigue. They don't want to see us yelling at each other for the sake of it. They want solutions, not arguments. They want unions and business to be able to work together in the common interests. They want an economy that works for them, not the other way around. Labor supports economic growth as the core part of our agenda because jobs are always first, second and third priority of this great party. Not just any job, good jobs with fair pay and fair conditions. That's why we were created out of the trade union movement way back in 1891. And today, those values are just as important. We want an inclusive society, one that reaches out and does achieve social justice. That doesn't mean dragging people down, that means lifting people up. That means a positive agenda when it comes to inclusion, including on the basis of gender, on the basis of race and ethnicity, on the basis of who people uh, love and on the basis of faith. We respect people. And I have said before that one of the great privileges of living in the greatest country on the planet is our diversity, is our multiculturalism. We need to celebrate it each and every day. We also need to promote opportunity regardless of where people live. There's a bit of a debate about aspiration going on. I see myself as the embodiment of aspiration, the son of a single mum who made a courageous decision in 1963 to keep me. And indeed, under circumstances in which some of that brought shame to have a child out of wedlock in 1963. So I was given my father's name and I was told uh, that he had died. That was the level of pressure that was placed on a young Catholic woman in 1963. I'm standing here today as the physical embodiment of what this country offers. Opportunity to aspire to a better life. But it's not just about individualism, because I believe that Australians firmly want not just a better life for themselves, they want a better life for their family. They want a better life for their neighbours. They want a better life for their community and for their nation. And that's what Labor offers. That's what we need to clearly articulate so that whether you are a trade union member, a non-union member, a someone who's involved in small and family business, whether you're someone who's set yourself up as a tradie, whether you're a pensioner, whether you're young and old, whether you live in a city or a region or a remote community, you feel included in society. And that is the Labor agenda very much. I've concentrated in the last decade on, uh, on building, whether in government or in opposition as a shadow minister. Wherever I go in the country, I can point towards projects and things that we've built, whether that be major projects of railways and roads throughout the country, or whether it be my engagement with local government, where in my period as the minister, I transformed the relationship between the national government and local government. I treated every mayor and shire president in the country with respect. I brought them to Parliament House. They got to meet the Prime Minister and the Treasurer and the Deputy Prime Minister and the entire team here in Parliament House over a period, not for an hour, for days, and have that genuine dialogue and engagement. I intend to renew that engagement as Labor leader in regional Queensland, in regional WA and New South Wales, in Tasmania, in South Australia, in the territories, right throughout the country. I intend to build on that relationship that I have. And I think that is very important that at this phase, uh, we all go out there and there will be a, a listening tour 
uh, will have a, a shadow ministry uh, meeting next week. It is time for us to use this period to listen to what people are saying to us about how we can improve our performance. Because we do need to, as I've said before, hasten slowly. The next election is three years away. I was asked earlier today whether there'd be any debate about legislation uh, before uh, in this afternoon's caucus. <laughs> the government has to form policy before they can put it into legislation before we can then consider it. Because at the moment, very clearly, uh, the government relied upon a fear campaign and what they were against. They were against us. Uh, they don't really have a third term agenda. And we shouldn't let them get away with this idea that somehow there's anything new about them, because there's not. This is their third term in office. Uh, they have concentrated in their second term in fighting each other. What they need to do is fight for the nation. And we will do that. We will do that. Bob Hawke showed us, I believe, that we're at our best when we bring the nation together. And that needs to be a guiding light for us, <coughs> bringing people together, trying to do what we can, even from opposition, but then in government, to narrow the gap, to say to Australians that what divides us is much less than what unites us, that we do have common interests and we do have common purpose. Chifley, of course, spoke about the light on the hill. We need to power that up so that every Australian in every corner of this vast continent can see the light that we offer. This caucus is an amazing group of people. The truth is that uh, the uh, getting together of the shadow ministry team, uh, any, any one here could have served. Uh, the team that we will be going forward with, uh, I want, uh, person to person is just so much more impressive and capable than those on the government benches who have suffered on top of uh, what occurred last time where they had ministers who had to be hidden from view during an election campaign. They since then, of course, in recent times, you've seen Malcolm Turnbull, Julie Bishop, Christopher Pine, Arthur Sinodinus and Mitch Fifield depart the scene. Uh, that's a, a huge group of their best people have left. So we'll see what they come up with. But I think that one of the points that I want to make, and I'll conclude uh, with, uh, with these points, is that this group are quite rightly disappointed. I am too. Uh, I wanted and, and thought, truth is, I'm not going to rewrite history, I thought when I arrived at Channel 9 on election night that uh, we would be claiming victory at some stage during that evening. Again, a lesson of why we need to hasten slowly. The election won't be determined in coming months. Won't even be next year, by the way. It'll be some time between December 2021 and March 2022. We need to continue to respond to the day-to-day -day issues that we have to, and we will. But always focusing on that day, because it's that day that matters in terms of whether we're in a position of forming government. So from time to time, you'll see various reports from the fourth estate saying uh, the leader of the Labor Party wouldn't answer every question that was put there because he said he was going to consult the caucus and the team. Too right I am. Too right I am. Because the capacity of all of the people in this room I value and I want to hear from and I want you to participate in those decisions. Because collective decision making is always much better than decision making by an individual. And we've been really well served. Uh, over the last uh, two terms by the fact that we have had a collegiate atmosphere. And that comes from the top in Bill, but also comes from the bottom. Also comes from the bottom, from the responsibility that caucus members 
have shown. I can't remember the last time that a shadow cabinet meeting leaked. I can't remember it. That hasn't always been the case. So we need that discipline. So I say that we are disappointed, but we're certainly not despairing. We are determined, determined to do better. Our task is great. We've only gone from opposition in a government three times since the Second World War. Whitlam, Hawke and Rudd. It's hard when you're the change party, when you're the party that seeks to really make a difference and has to argue the case. I think Australia is already a great country. Our task is to ensure that the even better Australia that awaits us is achieved with us in government after the next election. I thank you for honouring me with this support.